Previously on Blue Healers. It's not the sort of thing you can keep secret. Bloody Joe. Do you really think she's going to leave him, Ben? She's got two kids. So? So, you don't think it's being a bit irresponsible? I'm not going to walk out on somebody who needs me. It's called adultery, Ben. Who are the parents of this child? We are. I am. No, he is my son. Hey, and he's my son me. as he is, well. He's not, he's not your, your son. son. He is. He's not your son. The judge said I can have contact, but first I have to do some stupid psychological cancelling thing. Why is that necessary? Because I'm a man. Come on, you're a father who's lost his kids. You know I'm right. What have you done with it? I'm right. What have you done with it? Hi, Hi. Hi. you're right. right. You've got to play by the rules, Geth, and you can't just take him when you want to. Well, you've got it wrong because I did not take him, okay? He came to me. That's an intervention order. If you go anywhere near Andrea Gibson or her son Kai, you face a possible term of imprisonment of up to five years. No. See, now they've got to you, okay? You are supposed to be dealing with my No complaints. one gets to me. Please, Please don't, don't move! Don't move there! Ben! Get out! All things considered, it would probably be the wise thing for you to drive your husband home now. Oh, God, you heard the way he treats me. I'm not going anywhere with him. Mm, Felicity is staying with me. No way, mate. Well, if you won't have us, we'll find somewhere else to stay. I'm not letting you off the leash. You're coming back with me. I'm not a child, PJ. You're behaving like one. I've got a spare room at my place. You're more than welcome to stay there, Felicity. If you don't want to go home, I'll make sure the inspector gets home somehow. He's really He's gonna very wish good. he never laid eyes on me. Next left. Well, I... I want to see the children. I don't think you should be taking them out of their nice warm beds. It's how they caught their colds. Felicity taking them out at all hours of the night. Yes, I suppose you're right, Mum. I'll just look in on them if that's okay. Don't put on the light and try and not wake them. No, Mum. Come on, Cyril. Take you home. Ah, uh, we're uh, waiting for Jo. She's driving Falcon Price home. How do you feel about that? Haha, <laughs> don't ask. How long will she be? Ah, now, Tops. Well, she'll be breaking her neck to escape. Mm, well, don't make it any longer. The kitchen will be closed by then. You're quiet. Cat got your tongue. Oh, right, Chris. A beer would be nice, Chrissy, if you still sell it. Usual, Ben? I don't know, I might actually have the usual. Your usual saddle work. Actually, I'll just... So what's with Joe and the inspector? She's bucking for a new job. Yeah, it could be. Might be in vacancy, sir. Good one, Jones. Keep that up. Well, let's just get a table. Good jobs in Melbourne. Security. Oh, oh, oh yeah, great. Walking the beat and flashing your torch and banging on doors. No, I mean in management. We'd take a flat. Have the kids with us. It'd be great. See, what you two don't understand is that I'm serious. I'm in love with Felicity, and she loves me, and that is all that matters. No, no, th there are a few other things that matter, Ben, like, uh, like Falcon Price's children, like the sort of future you can offer them, them and Felicity. I'll be a great father. <laughs> oh, well, you've had the experience. That is not fair, Peter. Fair? You're, you're talking about what's fair. What about a 10-year marriage you've read? You think I did that on purpose? We're in love. PJ, that is why this has all happened. Oh, oh we love and kisses to start with Benny Boy always is. But you wait till the old domesticity kicks in. And you don't think she's going to miss everything she's had to give up? Her friends? The kids' school? Nice house, a nice street? Security? A father of children. 
I will be the father of her children. You'll be one of two. Benny, when are you going to grow up? Brave soldier. Thank you. I should uh, start getting back. I don't think I need a drink. Look, you've been very kind and slave. You haven't eaten. I was going to eat at the pub. Of course. With your friends. Well, if they've waited for me, yeah. Well, there's that leg of lamb. And I make a mean roast. Yeah, look, um, how long are you going to be? Well, oh, right. No, 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 that's fine. No, just, thanks for telling us. Bye. She's eating with Falcon Price. Eating with him. Roast lamb. <laughs> There's more old Falcon Price than meets the eye then, isn't it? Chrissy, we're ready to order. Sorry, fellas, the kitchen's closed. What? I'm sorry. Great. Just great. Hamburger, anyone? Oh, here. Yeah. I find that easier. Yeah. Checking. Robert. My boy, Rob. He was born just before we made the move to St. David's. Catherine. Little one. A couple of years after that. Must have been hard for her. Felicity. Picking up her career. She comes from a good background, you know. University. She was an account executive in an advertising agency. Not much call for that here. No, not that much. My wife's having an affair with Senior Constable Stewart. I don't think I should... No, 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 no. Of course not. I don't expect you to say anything. I respect your loyalty. Thank you. Loyalty. There's not much of that around here. Certainly not in this house. You don't think you're being a bit unfair on your wife, sir? Unfair? She was going to AA. Very reluctantly. Yes, I agree, she's got a problem, but no. I don't think that warrants what she's done. No, no, probably not. But we both know if you look hard enough, you can find a motive for everything. Well, do you think I failed her somehow? That, that I'm the reason for her drinking? For her betrayal? Sorry, it's none of my business. So, what about you, Joe? Man in your life? Mm, I think so. I don't know. It's kind of on again, off again. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. I don't think either of us really know what we want. None of my business. More wine? Yeah, thanks. Hmm. Must be hard for someone with a drinking problem living with a wine lover. Oh, well, I have a lot of responsibility. I work long hours, burn the midnight oil a lot. I don't see why I should have to give up my wine just because... No, it must be difficult for her too if you're working so hard. What? You think I've neglected her? <laughs> Joe, we are not teenagers any longer. No, but if she did feel neglected and if she... Felt you didn't understand her problem. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think I do. And she found someone who did, someone with the same problem. Stuart. Well, they met at AA. She's been going every week. I'm talking too much, I'm sorry, I should go. Um... Well, I don't think you can drive her like that. Um, no, I'll. I'll... Call a taxi. And... You can stay here. I I don't think that's a very good idea. I meant in Catherine's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. 
Attractive though you most certainly are, Joe. I don't think I need any further complications in my life right at the moment. A greater for the same. But that doesn't mean we can't finish the wine. No. Cheers. Cheers. Good friends. Mm. Friends. Mate, I told you to take a sickie. I'm not hiding from the inspector, PJ, and I just want to see Felicity. Well, neither of those is a good idea. Tess, just give him something to do to get him out of yeah. here. Morning, sir. Croydon not in yet? He'll be in shortly. I'll wait in his office. Summonses. These should keep you busy all day. After I've seen Felicity. Now, Ben. So, how does he feel today? Who? Falcon Price. The boyfriend. <sighs> About Ben. Has he calmed down? Well, he certainly seems more relaxed today, don't you think? Well, must have been a, a rough night for you, I suppose. No, not really. I quite enjoyed it. Didn't get much sleep, though. A lot of talking, I suppose. No, he doesn't talk much, actually. Hey, you're the one who does the play. What's that supposed to mean? You know what that means. This is Falcon Price. Good morning. Come in here. We won't be disturbed. No! Felicity, please. No, look, if you have something to say to me, you can say it here. Very well, if you don't mind having our dirty linen aired in public. Such a way with words, haven't you? Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I just feel that... Maybe I might have contributed to all of this. Oh, really? You're not making this very easy for you. If we could go somewhere. No! 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 Fine. I realise lately. Pressure of work and all that. Ben, Ben. What are you doing here? I forgot my notebook. Felicity, can I speak to you for a moment? No, you certainly cannot. Felicity, please. Yes. I don't know. Did you hear what I said, Stuart? Oh, that's, that's enough! I've been in my office, Joe. I'll look after the inspector and his wife. You were told not to show your face, Ben. I am not hiding from him. I had him calm down. Now you've started it all up again. I have to see Felicity. I want her and the kids to move in with me now. M move in. Move in where? To our place. Not for long, just till we get organised. A few weeks, maybe. Come on, you're supposed to be my mates. Oh, you do sort of that. PJ. Benny. Mate. You've got a death wish, you know that? I have never been so happy in my life. The boss is here. Out. Don't get seen. What about the children? You haven't even asked about them. Somebody mind telling me what's going on? Boss, you don't want to know. On the contrary, Sergeant, I do want to know. PJ? Uh, they're having a bit of a semester. Do, I get home. do you think they can arrange to have it somewhere else, Sergeant? Tell the inspector I'd like to see him in my office without his wife. You too, PJ. Anyway, I'm just going to yes, pick them up, OK? Excuse me, sir, if you have a minute. Senior Sergeant Croydon would like to see you in his office. Yes, of course. got a black eye. Yes. Uh, it was an accident. Yes, it always is. I trust it didn't happen in my station. I'm afraid I had an altercation of a personal nature with Senior Constable Stewart. Oh, Lord. He descended into physicality. He hit you? Senior Constable Stewart? Yes. And now I've been informed. Yes. And now I'll have to inform the SD. Why can't you just settle it here? Because we can't parish. I suggest you stay out of it. What are you doing in here anyway? Uh, just leaving, boss. 
So you were just going to let me go over there for nothing, were you? Sorry, go where? This oh. is Falcon Price. Well, fortunately, I wonder if you I could do this outside. First. Your mother said, oh, darling, the nice young detective has already come and collected them. I didn't what were you doing taking them from I me, didn't were you? didn't send any detective. I'm the only detective here. Oh, my God. Russell, please, I am not one of your detectives. For goodness sake, Mum, you must have got a good look at him. You just take it easy, Mrs. Falcon Price. There's no need to panic. I'm not a child, young man, and I'm not panicking. Oh, dear, those poor children. Was he unshaven, do you recall? You're thinking of Fox, Gethin Fox, Mrs. Falcon Price. He was clean shaven. And he wore a suit, collar and tie. He was a detective. He said he was, and I believed him. He said Russell had sent him. Well, well, did you see his car? It's an old Jeep thing. Russell, I know the kind of cars police drive, and they're not old Jeeps. So, what sort of car? It was... It was the same kind of car that Russell drives. A Camry. It was blue. I'm sure it was blue. One of the neighbours saw a blue Camry pulling out of the drive. No, it was he about 29, 30? About that. And he was about the same height as Russell. It's Fox, without a doubt. Tactical response are a few hours away, so we're on our own until then. Well, we've issued descriptions of both vehicles and the Kalofs. Kalofs? Sorry, Kalof, keep a lookout for. What about the caravan part? His site was completely cleared out. So there's nothing more we can do now, but wait. Wait? Until he contacts us. If he contacts us. He'll contact us. Unless this is just retaliation. What for? For your treatment of him, sir. How he perceived your treatment of him. I did nothing to warrant this. Oh, my God, that's it, isn't it? He's one of the victims you bully and stand it's over. nothing of the kind. No one stood over anyone. It's useless blaming each other. Is it? Oh, this is why it's happened, Russell, because of you. Because of you! Joe, get Ben in. What do we need him for? Because he knows Fox better than any of us. Get him. Ben, are you with us? Well, you probably know him as well as I do, but I don't think that he would do anything this stupid. I told you this was a waste of time. He's useless to us or anyone else. Let's just assume Fox has done it. What's he thinking? We know that he's had testicular cancer. We know that he can never have another child of his own, so Kai is his only chance of being a father. Right, so he's taken Inspector's kids as a bargaining tool. Well, if he has, then it's likely. Well, he's got to contact us then. Well, you. So somebody should be at home in case he calls there. I'm not leaving. I'll have my calls transferred. I'll organise that, sir. Jones, you we haven't had a stolen vehicle report on a blue camera, have we? No, nothing's come in. So where did Gethin get the car? I don't know. He's pretty much a loner. He's got no family or friends in Mount Thomas. I was pretty chummy with his lawyer. Huh? What sort of car does Corby drive? I'm one of about a thousand law-abiding citizens of Mount Thomas who happen to drive a blue Camry. No, oh, sir. It'd be more like one of twelve. And you've had the other 11 in this morning, I take it? Well, the others don't represent Mr Fox, and I assume they haven't lent him their cars. Did you? It's outside now. Did you lend him your car last night or this morning? Privileged information, Detective. So, tell us about uh, this men's group you represent, Mr Corby, or is that privileged information as well? With pleasure. It's a group of injured men who've banded together to give each other more support. Not injured in what way? Injured in the courts. Injured by a system that favours women over men. Injured by an iniquitous system that deprives them of their paternal rights. Like it did to you? Yes, like it did to me. Look, I don't see what this has got to do with my car or anything else. Did you ever consider kidnapping your own child, Mr Corby? Don't be ridiculous. Not that it wouldn't have been justified. Did you advise Mr Fox to kidnap his? I think I'll leave now, Detective. In my blue Toyota Camry. So how would you feel knowing that your vehicle was used by Mr Fox to kidnap not his own child, but two other children? Mr Corby? It's yours? Never seen it before. Yeah, that's funny. We found it in your car. It's Catherine's. Where is she? Where is she? Ellis? Oh, I've got no idea. I swear. Found it under the passenger seat. 
Now, Corby, you tell us now everything you know. Oh, my God, you're a dead man. He just wanted to borrow my car. Right, so you provided the kidnap vehicle. <laughs> I thought he just wanted to take his son Kai fishing. God, there's nothing wrong with that. So where is he now? I don't know. He called me from a payphone this morning just before you people arrived. Why? To tell me where he'd left the car. A payphone? Guess I just got a mobile. Right, so he must have been calling from a dead area. All right, Alice, this is your chance to help get yourself out of this. Did you hear anything? And I mean anything in the background. No, no, no. I was just listening to him. Right, well, there's a chance gone. Uh, but look, just a minute. I could hear traffic, a couple of cars pulling in, starting up again. Like a petrol station? Maybe. He was outside, but there was music. Just snatches of it. I don't know. Serve on St David's Road. They play music in the cafe. And one of those bells. You know, the type that rings when the door is opened. I'm almost sure I heard that. We're in position. There's no sign of him at the server. So all we can do is wait and hope he comes back. <sighs> yeah, all right, PJ. Keep us informed. We think your children are going to be all right. If Fox has them, he's using them to get his own son back. Sounds like he's psychotic. I don't think so, but we're being very careful at this stage. He's likely to contact us, and if he uses that phone again, we'll get him. I'd really like to be there. Not a good idea, Felicity. Please, leave it to the experts. Ben? Hmm. I really want to go to the service station and right? tell I can't do that, sweetheart. It's too dangerous. Not for us, but for, for Catherine and Robert. Oh, no. What have I done? Oh, it's all right. Everything is going to be all right. Get your hands off my wife! Stuart! I'd like a word, please. My office. We'll start with yesterday, when you were with Felicity, Falcon Price. You know about that? I'm not a total fool, Stuart, and I'm looking for answers, not questions. Sorry, I thought that when we got away from the motel room motel? without him you finding were... out... You were at a motel, together. We didn't know half the station was out looking for us. And they found you... In bed. Yes, boss. But I love and respect her, and we're planning on being together. And you've told this to Inspector Falconbrook? Well, not in as many words, but I think he knows. Hence the black eye. Yeah, sort of. Boss, Gavin Fox is at the survey. Later, Stuart. Yes, boss. Old Bechtel has actually made the call. We need him on time. What's your pay, Jane? Joe is coming in. Get out of sight. Get out of sight. Claire, grab some change for the phone. Yeah, sure. Why did you borrow Ellis Corby's car this morning? Did he tell you that? Impersonating a police member. You're racking up quite a list of charges there, Gethin. I borrowed his car because my car broke down. Yes, we found it outside the inspector's house yesterday, but it's not there any longer, so you obviously got it fixed. Yeah, well, wouldn't you know the bloody thing broke Stop down on me Stop stuffing yeah. us around. I'm telling you the truth. So why did you give him his car back? Because Ellis needed it, so I borrowed another car. And which helpful friend lent you this one? Just a helpful friend. From Corby's desperate dad's group? There is nothing illegal in borrowing a car. I want to speak to my lawyer. When they get a chance, did you uh, get the print to go on the plug? Yeah, I said, Mr. 
There's an old silica hatchback parked about 100 metres from the servo with the keys in the ignition. So it could be how he got there and just left it there for a quick getaway. Who does it come up to? Address in Mount Thomas. There's no one home. Fox could have borrowed it. But the point is, he's got a mobile, but he had to go to the servo to phone. So, they could be here, here or here. Uh, he must have left them in some place lockable. Of a shed, farmhouse. Uh, excuse me. I believe we have a deal. Gethin wants his son, Kai, brought to the station, preferably not by his mother. He wants to spend some time with the boy. Not exactly. Then what does he want? He's to be allowed to leave with Kai and no one's to follow him. You must be joking. Let's hear the rest. I take it there is more. Half an hour down the highway, when he's convinced he's not being followed, he'll phone in and tell you where the Falcon Price children are. Can we trust him? I don't think we need his help. I think we can find them ourselves. Well, what if you can't? What happens then? Let's just take his offer. Can I remind everyone that we're talking about another child here, Kai, whose mother is not going to be too happy about turning him over to a man who's patently unstable? Yes, but surely in the circumstances she'd be prepared to take a risk. Would you? With your children? No. I'm sorry, of course you are. I think I've got a counter offer for him. Are you going to let him walk out of here with two kids in the house? Right, thank you. That's enough. Sergeant, perhaps you could explain to her and Jones and Stuart, I suppose, just what we have in mind. And keep your voices down. PJ is telling him that we won't negotiate until we know that the kids are safe. Good. That's good. Then we'll tell him we'll meet him on neutral ground, somewhere mm -hmm. where he'll feel secure. We'll make sure the kids are OK, and we'll make the swap for Kai Gibson. You're yeah. kidding. You can't do that. This had better be a setup. Exactly. Still in the chair. All right, Jonesy, you disable the car. Ben, you come with me. Joe, go around the back. Yeah. Let's go. Sir, say everything. on him. He's all over the road. The car's unsafe. Would you put your seatbelt on, sir? Yeah, you're right. to book uh, you. Just concentrate on your driving, eh? Well, how fast are we going? 115, 120. He's, he's going to come off the road. I think I saw one of the kids. Let him go. What? I don't want to see my kids killed in a car crash. Just stop now. Pull up. hasn't harmed them. Joe, Constable Parrish saw one of the children in the rear window of the... That was over an hour ago. They'll be terrified. I will never forgive you for this, Russell. I don't think we can blame the inspector for this. Well, I can. Everything is his fault. Everything.
You're right. It is my fault. I've ignored them and I've ignored you. And when you need me, I let you down. I'm sorry. Well, there's still his mobile, and he might have driven in a rage money. Try it, Judge. You want me to talk to him? No, let's keep you as our ace in the hole. We trust you more than he does us. Yeah, well, that's not much. Switched off or out of range? Let's have another look at the map. It's about half an hour now. Could be half eight of Melbourne. No, no, he still hasn't got his son yet. The inspector's kids are only pawns. He's not going anywhere till he's got Kai. Mount Thomas Police, Constable Jones speaking. Yeah, I'll just get him. See if you can get a trace. Oh. Yeah, I'll just put you through. Where are you, Gethin? Are the kids with you? I'll do the talking, Hashem. I'm not very happy with you and your people. <laughs> well, we're not that pleased with you either. No good trying to trace me. This is only going to take a moment. I'm this time I dictate the terms. We meet where I nominate and we do a direct swap. My mother. These I two for Kai. I'm hungry. Just be quiet, okay? And I'm warning you, Hashem, any funny business this time and these kids will be more than hungry, Just believe me. Just tell us what you want. There's a bridge. The Deep Creek Bridge. We exchange there in half an hour. No, no, no. We need, we need more time. What, so you can set up roadblocks? 30 minutes. You bring Kai to that bridge and he walks across it alone. Then I'll let the other two go. <laughs> Come on, Gethin, you can't expect little kids to do this alone. They'll be terrified. Look, I'll walk Kai across and then bring back the others. No way. Then no deal. All right, but not you. Ben Stewart. It has to be Ben. Unarmed. All right, Ben. But Gethin, those kids are going to be starving. They're going to need something. Um, some chocolate would do. Yeah, fine. We'll keep their energy up till we can feed them. OK, I'm hanging up. What was all that about the chocolate? Those kids are sugar monsters. Give them chocolate and they'll go burka. Well, let's just hope it doesn't get them killed. Sorry, no trace. Andrea Gibson is not going to agree to using Kai for bait. No mother would ever agree. Perhaps if I asked her. I'm ready to beg. No way. I am not going to put Kai into danger with that madman. He won't be in any danger, Andrea. I promise you, we will be looking after him. Well, the way you looked after him when Gethin took him away before. The fox won't get anywhere near the boy. No. He can't be trusted. He is obviously unstable. He could do anything. Andrea. He can't touch Kai. But he's got our two children. Catherine's only six. She must be terrified. I can't risk my child. Not for anyone. Take your boy home. Am I going to see my dad? Shh. Oh, yeah, come on. I still think we can do it. But without car, it's too risky. Yeah, you heard what Gethin said. We'll try to trick him again. I know what he said, but we've got no choice. Have you got a baseball cap? I wouldn't be seen dead in one. Wouldn't be seen dead in one, eh? Let's hope I'm not. Well, we'll want plenty of warning when he comes. Up there, James, I think on that rise. Should be able to get a good look at him. Check with... Parish and Hashem, will you find out if they're in position? Yes, sir. PJ, can we have a sit rep on your last? Don't step yeah, this up. Say that.
You say soon enough, mate. You're hurting. I'm hungry. We want more chocolate. Yeah, your mum will feed you in a minute, pal. She's not here. Where is she? I want mummy. Look, here. Yeah, you can have more chocolate. Here you go. There's one for you. Stay where you are, Ben. You're supposed to bring Kai. All right, Gethin. Yeah, he's in the car. Okay, now, we've done everything that you've asked. So, I'll bring Kai over when you send Robert and Catherine to no, me. No, get Kai. And I told you no guns. Get the gun off. Okay, okay. Getting rid of it. Chuck it in the creek. What, spend the rest of my life filling out forms? Are you crazy? There you go. You having a bit of trouble with him, are you? Listen, she wants her mum, so just send them to me and I'll bring Kai over. No, you give me Kai and I'll let these kids go. Kevin. I'm warning you, Ben. Go and get my son now. This is crazy, mate. Just let them go and it's all over. I knew I couldn't trust you, Ben. The deal's off. Give me Kai or Falcon Bloody Brusk and forget about his You're kids. Hurting. Leave him alone, you sick bastard. Ah! Come here, Robert. Come here. Stay back. Best stay back. It's all over, mate. No, it's not. Give me Kai. I want my son now. He's not here, mate. Look. Look behind you. Damn it, Ben. I trusted you. And you still can. Believe me, Geffen, it's the only way. Ah! Talk. I really want to thank you for what you did. Felicity, I just have to know I can't go on like this. It's just eating me ben, up. Ben, listen. It's over. I'm really sorry. Uh, just like that? Look. I just can't do this to my kids. I've been married for ten years. I have a responsibility to them and to Russell. To Russell? But not to me? If I loved you, it would be different. If you loved me? I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry.
you will be laying a formal complaint, so I understand. No. No. Well, it's all been a bit of a mix-up, really. He's not to blame for any of this, no more than anyone else. And the, uh, black eye? Clumsy of me. I took on the mat in Hashem's office. Ah. I hit my head on the edge of the desk. And does, uh, Stuart know about this accident? I suppose I have to thank you for saving my daughter. You don't have to thank me. I think the slate's just about plain. Yes, I suppose it is. In future, the less we see of each other, I think, the better. I couldn't agree more. Come on, darling. Let's go. Cool. 